Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Harish Kumar. Now I am going to start a new series on JavaScript array methods. Array methods are built in functions in JavaScript's array prototype that we can apply to our arrays to perform a change or calculations. JavaScript provides a vast number of methods that can be performed on arrays. In this series, I will explain most important array methods that can improve the way you use arrays in JavaScript. Today in this lesson, I am going to start with array prototype map method. So what is array map method? Array map was introduced in ECMAScript version 5 and it is supported in all modern browsers. It allows us to loop over an array much like a for loop, access each individual value of that array and returns value or new modified or new type of value for each item of an array and then it gives a brand new array. If you are confused then think of it as uh, let's say I have an array and its values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and now we want to create a brand new array based on this given array which has new copies or modified values of each item from this original array. For example, you want to multiply each item of this array with number 2. We can achieve this goal using array map method. First, let's see its syntax. So, its syntax is array.map and its first argument is callback function. And in this callback function, it accepts value, index, and array. And this value is the current element, for example, 1, 2, 3. And this index is the index of these item. And this array is a array we are looping, this one, which is rarely used. Inside this callback function, we need to return a value. This could be your array element or its modified version. We will come to this point. Next, the second argument of this map method is uh, this arg, which is optional. This argument allows us to bind this context inside this callback function, which is rarely used. And finally, this array map method returns a new array. Now, let's see its example. So, for this example, let's say we want to create a new array and so here I'll say array.map and then we pass a callback function, let's say double, let's create this callback function. So, function double and it is going to accept value or we can say it item and then it is going to have index and array. Now let's console log these to see what inside these parameters. So console log item and then index and our array. Now here in the console log you can see the items are 1, 2, 3 from these item values and these are the index of these items and the all these arrays are this one which we are looping. Now here we want to multiply these items with number 2. So here I'll say item multiply by 2 and then for map method we always need to return that value because we are not using this index and array so let's remove it. Now it will return a new array in this new array variable. So let's console log new array and here we go. You can see the number 1 is multiplied by 2 and its result is 2. So 2 is multiplied by 2, it's 4 and so on. Great, it is working. Or we can pass this directly from here like this. It will give the same result or we can use arrow functions instead of this. This will again give us the same result. We can also make it more short 
like this. It works the same. In arrow function, if we specify the statement like this without curly braces, it is assumed as after this arrow, this is the returned value. Let's see one more example. So let's say we have a, a new array const products and it has a array of objects with the product detail. So let's say it has a ID and product name. Let's say product name is product A and price any random value and uh, quantity let's duplicate these and id is to product b its price and quantity for this product id is 3 product c and similarly some random price and quantity now let's suppose this data is coming from your api now from this array you want a new array of only product IDs. So let's create a new const variable. Let's say product IDs. And then here I'll use products.map. And here we will pass a callback function which is going to accept single product. And then here we will return product ID. Now let's console log product IDs. And here we go. We get the three items, which is only product IDs. Similarly, if you want product name, then here we will say product dot name. And now we will get array of only product names. Or maybe you want a, a collection of products, which has only ID and product name. So from here, we will return a object, which has ID, product ID and we want to return name which is product dot name now here you can see we have a brand new array which has collection of product objects and this object has product id and product name let's say you also need a total price of these product based on these quantities so here let's pass a total price and here i'll say product dot price multiply by product dot quantity and now in this console log you will see our total price as well which is the multiplication of product price and quantity now here it is important to note that in the map method you should always return a value if you, you will not return a value it will going to add undefined values in the newly created array Let's see an example. So let's say you want a total price for product ID 2 only. For other products, we don't need total price. So here we will say if product dot ID is equal to 2, in that case, return this object. And now in the console log, you can see because we have written this object for product ID 2, so here we get the product object for this product id2 and for other we get undefined so it is important to return a value in the end so to fix this we will return a object after this if condition like this we don't need this total price so let's remove it and now we have a new array for product id1 we have id and its name for product ID 2, we have ID, name and total price. And for product ID 3, we have ID and name only. And the second argument of this map method is uh, this R, which is used to bind this context in this callback function, which is very rarely used. This R is used with the callback function, which is defined using function keyword instead of arrow functions. Now from this callback, if I console log this, for now let's remove this second argument. And here you can see it has console log the window object. And from here, if I pass any random value, let's say 80, and here we go. You can see it has console log the number 80. Let's say here we pass a date, and you will see it has console log the date function 
now similarly let's pass a new date and from this console log let's console log this dot get month and here we go it has printed the month number three for three iterations this is all in this lesson i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching if you like the video hit the like button share this video and don't forget to subscribe us see you in the next lesson mm -hmm.